Hi, I'm Cassandra, and I'm going to give you the grass roots guide to worm composting and local food. First, I'm going to start with a story, and it would be nice if I had slides, but maybe not. Um, once upon a time, there was a beggar that stood on the same street corner day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. And one day, 30 years later, he's on the street corner begging for money like he did every single day. And a man passed by and he asked him for money. And the man said, how long have you been doing this? And he's like, I've, for as long as I can remember, it's been decades. And he goes, well, Mr. Beggar, I see you're standing next to a box. What's in the box? And the beggar said, I don't know. I never looked. And so the beggar went and looked in the box and what he found was gold. And as I came out, I noticed there's a box. Do you think I should look in the box? Yeah. All right, let's see what's in the box. Oh my goodness, there's worms. And that's like gold to me. Why are worms like gold to me? Because they create high quality compost from your garbage. And so now I'm gonna paint the picture of, a, of a, what a world might look like if we all worm composted. So let's start with apartments. Apartments are places where there's a lot of people and not a lot of space. People in apartments, they could, um, there's lots of ways that they could compost. And what I wanna say first is, have you all seen the commercial where they're like, we all bundle, we all, but everybody bundles, okay? We all don't have to bundle. We all don't have to do it the same way. So I'm just gonna throw out some ideas, here are my slides, and show you what it could like. Could, what it could be like. So in these apartments, maybe at the end of the hallway where they have all the rest of the recycling bins, they have a bin for where they put their worm food, which would be their kitchen scraps and see vegetable peels, orange peels, all that stuff. That can all the organic waste can go in the worm composting bin. And you add worms and paper and then you get lovely compost. Yes, so in these apartments, maybe they have those at the end of the hallway, or maybe someone comes with a rolly cart like once a week and everybody throws their, their kitchen scraps in the rolly cart. And then the rolly cart goes down into the basement or maybe to a utility room or maybe out behind the apartment complex where they have a dehydrator and they dehydrate all that food and then that way there's not any problems with smell or bugs or pathogens. And then the food that gets dehydrated goes into um, where does it go? <laughs> it, uh, it, the dehydrated food goes into the drawers where they have a big set of metal drawers where the worms live and the worms make the worm compost there in the drawers. And this is actually a real place. This is behind Whole Foods in Raleigh, North Carolina. That's what they do. They take all their food waste that comes out of the Whole Foods, they dehydrate it, they put it in drawers with worms. Or in this apartment complex, Oh yeah, and after, after they get the worm, the compost, where does the compost go? Well, it goes to patio gardens, it goes to rooftop gardens, or even in Japan, they have uh, built-in planters on the side of the buildings. We could do something like that. Then um, another place we could do worm composting would be restaurants. Okay, so r restaurants have a lot of food waste. Maybe they could compost out behind the, the restaurant and then they could have a little garden where they grow herbs and vegetables and that would go into their food and then um, and it would be part of the food they serve. Or maybe the restaurant is like in a mall and, it, and their worm compost can go into the, the landscaping of the mall. Or maybe um, they don't have the, the, you know, they live like in a very urban area and they, they don't have the room to compost behind the, the restaurant. So they could do little composting bins like this and uh, people in apartments could have little composting bins like this. And all you do is you throw your kitchen scraps and your garbage in there and then when it gets full, a truck comes along and takes all the empty bins and they gives you em empty bins with just worms and it takes it to the worm composting facility where they have the equipment, like a trommel, where they can separate the worms and the compost to give you an empty bin back, and then they can use the worm compost elsewhere. Or this is worm power in upstate New York. They could have bigger beds where they can handle more waste that like come from restaurants or something like that. And then all of this compost can go to places like golf courses and uh, community gardens and or organic farms. And then the last place I'm gonna talk about is um, in more urban areas where you have a lot of space and um, room, then 
you could do the same thing. You can do, everybody can have individual bins, or people can do bigger bi bigger bins in their backyards, or you might have somebody like uh, Joseph De, Le De Leon of the Austin Composting Coalition that comes along on his bicycle and picks up food waste from everybody, and he composts it in his backyard, and then everybody gets compost back, or it goes to the golf courses, or it goes to the organic farms, or it goes wherever it needs. Now, why am I harping so much about compost? I mean, not only is it good to grow things, but it's a way to sequester carbon because instead of letting the food rot, what it does is it, it captures the carbon and puts it in a very stable form where it will stay in the ground for hundreds of years. It also makes the ground act like a sponge where it holds a lot more of the, of the rainwater that falls on it instead of running off into to nowhere. It also reduces, that was Joseph, he just went by. <laughs> it, it, um, it also reduces the amount of waste that goes to the landfill, and um, it creates biodiversity in the soil, which is very important, and we always need biodiversity. So my final question to you is, what's in your box?